kind of complex pattern for you today. It's going to be a bluegill pattern, and I'm using multiple different types of products, mostly by uh, Fly Tires Dungeon. But I just got this stuff in. I've tied one pattern with it al already, and I like it a lot. But it comes in some really nice bright colors, which is going to be great for this pattern. And then I've got my bullfrog dubbing that I use quite a bit. And it's kind of going to be like my uh, fathead squishy streamer, only it's going to be slightly different, and you'll see how. Let's get started. It's going to be a lot like my fathead squishy streamers. I wanted to make a bluegill pattern of that for a long time, but Fly Tires Dungeon didn't have bullfrog in blue, which I kind of needed. So I'm going with a white thread. This is Danville's 210 Flat Wax. And the reason why I'm using this is it's the only thread I have that is really, really heavy. I want this to last a while. This fly is made to fish bass, maybe even pike. Just large, large fish. So first I'm taking some of this uh, Northern Lights by Fly Tires Dungeon. I'm going to tie that in right on top. And it's not going to be right in the center. There's more out coming out this way than this side. What that does is it creates a little bulk right there. Now take some of your bullfrog dubbing here, and then you want to pull it apart, and that will align all the fibers. And then for some flash, I'm going to take some of this starburst dubbing and mix that into it. If I just pull them apart, line it back together, try to align all the fibers, and want to do this quite a few times. We'll tie that right in the center, right on the underside of the hook. We're going to do the same thing with this light olive. Now this package doesn't have a label on it for some reason. So I don't know the color of it, but it is a light olive color. And that's just what I'm going to use on this for the tail. And then we're going to take some of this starburst dubbing, dubbing. And I think this is olive, just plain olive. Again, it does not have a label on it. In the early days, when you used to start getting Stuff from Fly Tires Dungeon. They kind of didn't always put labels on everything. It was, uh, you know, it took forever to get the items and whatnot. But it was great stuff for a good price, and it's still a great price for all their stuff. But they've gotten a little better about it. So as you can see, there's actually more to this clump than there is to the white, because bullfrog dubbing floats a little. It is a dry fly dubbing technically. Um, you always want to put more on the top, so that way your hook will ride downward. That way it wouldn't flip over. Then we're just going to take some of this olive starburst dubbing. We're just going to dub it. And then we're going to take some Velcro. Comb that up. And then we take a pick and just blend these fibers together. Make sure you pick out all the extra pieces. So now we're doing the same thing with the white again, the white bullfrog. We're going to mix in this pearl starburst again. So once you've got that, you're actually going to cut this right in half here. And then you're making square tips, so line those differently. And then mix that in together so it's not perfectly square. So 
Now we're going to take this darker olive, whole frog. So mix in some of that olive starburst. Now you can see we're already starting to build a thin but tall body. So next we're going to take this lemon hopper color, which is a nice like orange, uh, I'm sorry, uh, yellow. We're going to cut this in half. Pretty much from this point on, anything on the belly, anything on the underside of the hook is going to be cut in half. We don't need the long length. So now I've got this royal blue arctic wind. We're going to do the same. We're going to pull it apart. Let's see how shiny and beautiful this stuff is. It's really, really nice stuff. Now it is very important that we are making sure everything is on either top or bottom. Uh, you don't want this off to the side a little bit. You need this to be stacked very upright because otherwise it's going to not track properly. So now we're taking a little more yellow, cutting it in half. I'm going to do one more clump, set my fair size clump of this olive bullfrog again. And now I've got this aqua blue arctic wind. I'm going to take a fair clump of this, pull it apart, and we are going to cut this in half. And we are going to just lay it right on the side here. And try to spread it around a little. Got this uh, hot orange arctic wind cut in half and tie that in right on the underside. I'm going to take just a little more of this dark olive. This time we don't need a lot. Since we're using a white thread, I don't like the head to be white, so I'm going to color it, the thread, red with a sharpie. So 
So now let's go ahead and tease out our fibers. Make sure it's all blended nice together. Especially, you want to come down through the top and get the sides. That top part is important because you're trying to blend this blue with the, with the olive. And really spend your time doing this. This is a very important step. Then we're gonna add some eyes. I really like these really big oversized eyes. To attach eyes, I like this Fletch Tight. You can use a gel super glue, that works really well too. Now go ahead and look to where you want this one. You wanna put it roughly in the same spot. And the lining up of this is very important because that's how it's going to track. And this is Solarez's Flex Formula. We're going to start with um, adding some right around the eyes. Once you do that, then you take your bodkin You're going to try to shape this to the size, uh, to what a um, you know, bluegill looks like. So, I'm going to make this as even as possible or it's going to track funky. Really spend your time on making sure this is shaped the way that you want because once you cure this, that's it. Now if you notice, that really glows. This has a UV, um, what they call hot, so the, the hot orange. Uh, that bottom part there really glows. Turn off the lights and you'll see what I'm talking about. You can see how that glows. Super bright. Most of these bluegill have this black dot. Do the same on this side. Also, bluegills will have these stripes, but they're, they're subtle. They're not super dark stripes. They're not like perch. So I take just a, a light green Sharpie. I like doing this. It does not need to be done, but I like doing it. I like adding more up on the head here. And it gives it a nice, cool, like, shiny, finish to it. Hang that upside down for a minute. Do a few rotations. And also, this kind of puffs up the head a bit, which is exactly what those fish look like. Now, since we're putting so much on there, so much resin, really got to make sure that it's cured. Usually this cures really quick. So that's the nice thing about this fly, you can see it will hold its shape. The 
bass hits it, is going to compress and get into the hook. And also, if you want, you can always uh, just cut a nice uh, angle on that. Another nice thing about this fly is because of the this almost creating a shell around the head, but then the material underneath being very uh, buoyant in a way. This will allow this to kind of jerk side to side, kind of like a um, like a jerk bait or um, like a walk the dog kind of motion. It'll kind of roll side to side a little, but it'll also kind of jerk like oh, when it's coming at you. It'll kind of like move like this. <laughs> 